Next, we have Cisco Unity Connection. Cisco Unity Connection is a voice messaging solution. We can say voicemail solution, but it is not just a voicemail solution. Like I said, in CUCM, it was called call control, but it just does not do call control anymore. It has much more features and functions. So now it's called Communications Manager. Similarly, Cisco Unity Connection was made a voicemail server earlier. Then later on, a lot of services have been implemented. It's not just used for voicemail. So it is called voice messaging system now. So it is a voice messaging solution. It is a Linux based appliance, same way like CUCM. It is a uh, used in the form of VM. It can be installed on a, a ESXi host or it can be configured on a router as a CUC Express. So it is a voice messaging solution. It's Linux based. Again, in CUC also, you can have cluster. You can have publisher and subscriber. We will see what is the cluster of CUC looks like. So for now, it can be integrated with PBX, which is not very commonly used now. But to connect to a PBX, uh, to integrate to the PBX, two types of connections can be there. One is PIMG, PBX IP Media Gateway, and TIMG, that is T1 IP Media Gateway. Either this or this, two types of integration is possible to PBX. So to integrate to PBX from CUC, you can have either PBX IP Media Gateway or T1 IP Media Gateway. <clears throat> okay, then to integrate with CUCM, it can have SIP integration or SCCP integration. SCCP is skinny client control protocol and SIP is session initiation protocol, very famous. <laughs> SCCP is famous, of course, in Cisco world, <laughs> but not other than that because it is a proprietary protocol. Mm -hmm. It is Cisco pro pro mm -hmm. proprietary. Mm -hmm. So skinny, it is for short, we call it just skinny protocol. And the full form is skinny client control protocol. Right. So two ways of integrating with CUCM is if you have Cisco solutions, you can choose SCCP or you can go for SIP. SIP will work anyway. But if you have any other vendor devices, then SIP is the only solution you have. So these are some integration ways. Next up for uh, CUC design consideration. So like we know in CUCM, how many users are supported per server? 10,000. So if you have two servers in a, in a cluster, you have 20,000 users, right? If you have four, then you will have 40,000 users right? supported in your network. In CUC, one node supports 20,000 mailboxes. CUC is used for mailboxes, right? So for voicemail solution, for voice messaging. So 20,000 mailboxes are supported per server. But it is not just limited to server, that is per cluster here. By that, what I mean is, if you have, let's say, one publisher, CUC, and one subscriber, CUC. If one publisher, if just by having one publisher, no other subscriber, it will give you 20,000 users supported, right? If you want to add a subscriber to it, now your cluster is a publisher and one subscriber, which is the maximum we can have, right? And in that case, it will not be doubled. Like in the case of CUCM, what happens if 10,000 and 10,000, so you will have 20,000 users now. But in CUC, you will still have 20,000 only. It's just as a backup. It's just used as a backup here. But the advantage we get is, uh, what happens is with one server, you can have 20,000 users. That means 20,000 mailboxes per server and 250 ports. Now, by this 250 ports, what I mean is when, uh, let's say, in your network, you have thousands of users and some users are checking their voicemails, right? So what they are doing is on their phones, they just press the messages button and you go to the voicemail, right? And you check your voicemail. So that means you are making a communication to the voicemail server to find out your uh, voicemail, right? So how many users are doing that at once? How many users are accessing their voicemail at once? Not many, right? So Cisco has enabled 250 ports by default. So you have although 20,000 voicemails 
supported per uh, server, but only 250 active ports are there simultaneously. So 250 users at once can access their voicemail, right? Which is actually enough, mostly, oh. mostly enough because voicemail, oh, yeah. So yeah, we have a great voicemail yeah, very less now. Yeah, well, that's why you know, those phones are quite many of them. If you observe some of those sets, they have a red line. Mm. You know, that voicemail signal mm. is an iPad phone set. Yeah. Some, no one ever reads voicemail. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> that's the, the, the people just. It's, know, it's yeah. usually there when it's yeah, a it's call true. centers or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Events. yeah. yeah. But I'm the same for, for, for generation. Hmm. Like, yeah. 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 So I can understand very well. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so, okay. So, one server supports 20,000 users and 250 simultaneous ports. Right. And if you add one subscriber, the number of users still remains to 20,000, but the ports get added. So, it will be 500 ports now. What did you add? Again. When you add a subscriber, Beyond. so then your ports get doubled. So just let me make it again. Right. That's right. Add, add, hmm. Let's say you have just one CUC server, right? That mm -hmm. is your publisher. So with this, what you are getting is 20,000 users okay. and 250 ports, yes. active ports. Yes. Now you add one subscriber here. So with this entire solution, this cluster, okay. you will still get 20,000 users, oh, but your ports wow. get doubled. Yeah, so you get more ports. That is one advantage. And other advantage is back redundancy. Yeah. But that is not. <laughs> that is, yeah, logically that is correct. That will happen. But uh, in CUC cluster, it you can have only one subscriber. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then next, uh, we're talking about so you see call routing. How call routing works? Call routing here by that we are meaning that how the users are sending and receiving voicemails, right? There can be two types of call routing: direct routing and forward routing. Direct routing is when a phone, let's say an end device is making a direct call to the CUC. It can be an internal user, right? So the internal users know what your CUC number is, right? Your voicemail number. So directly calling to the voicemail number that is direct routing, right? And when someone from outside making a call to an extension, for example, a customer care number, right? They are calling to this number. Then from there it gets forwarded to the CUC in any case. Right, that is called forward routing. So two types of routing can be there: direct routing, making a call to the uh, Unity Express directly. That is the case when internal users are making call to the Unity connection, and the other is when the outside users are making call and they do not know about your internal Unity connection. So they are making call to a external number, the public number that you have provided as a coming, uh, let's say, customer care number, and from there when it is routed in any case to the CUC, that is forward routing. And these are the two types of 